At a younger age, your children crave your attention. And when they get older, you will crave their attention. But if you don't give them attention when they're tiny, when they come to you with their toys and you say, Go in your room, I'm watching the news. The game is on. Could you take him, please? Come on, I had a long day at work. I don't want to deal with this right now. We have some, we have, I have friends over. It's embarrassing. Go to sleep. Go get out of here. When you have this attitude towards your children, like they're an obstacle in your path, your job was at work. When you come home, you're on vacation. No, buddy, your job began when you came home. That's your job. What you did over there is just to fulfill your real job at home. Be a father. I'm talking to the men here. Be a father. Spend time with your children. They're not just there. So you, they, you put them in school and you come home from work. You just want to go to sleep. You don't want to bother with anybody. You don't want to talk to them. And actually the easiest way to not talk to them is get them an iPod touch and a, an iPhone. And get them a computer and a laptop in their own room with high speed internet. So you don't even have to look at their face. They could just be in their room all day Facebooking. Finding themselves a new set of parents online. Seriously. Be, be a father. Be a mother. Don't replace your motherhood and your fatherhood with these things because if you do, when they become independent, you know what happens to most parents? To most of you, your children, they only see you as a bunch of dollar signs walking around. And the only time they come and talk to you, Dad, can I have five bucks? Actually, nobody asks for five bucks anymore, right? It's 20s nowadays. And I know, I know youth, they haven't seen money that small. They don't know fives. Can I have $20? Can I go to the mall? Can you drop me off? Can I go over to my friend's house? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can I do the other? When they want something, they come to you. Otherwise, you don't see them. And when they get to a certain age where they are old enough to make their own little bit of money, guess what? You're not going to see them at all. Because your cash register is no longer relevant. That's no longer relevant. If this is the relationship you are setting yourself up for, you're headed for destruction. We got to change this now. And the way to change it, and it's going to be hard for a lot of you to implement this, but we have to be friends with our children. We have to be their best friends. They should enjoy hanging out with us the most, the parents. The parents should not be a nuisance. The parents should be a joy to children. They should be a joy to them. And, and being good parents doesn't mean you get them toys and you get them nice things and you get them nice clothes. That's all there and that's fine and dandy. But the most important thing you give them right now is your time. Especially in this society where so many things are pulling away at their time. And the thing you are not able to give them. You can give them their own room. You can give them money. You can give them allowance. You can give them clothes. But you don't give them time. And when you don't give them time, they separate themselves mentally from you. They cut themselves off. They learn to become independent at an early age. And independent in this society really means alienated. It doesn't just mean independent. This is a serious matter in how to raise our children. We have to openly communicate with them. And that's the other thing. And part of this communication, only one more thing about parenting before I go to marriage. Just one more basic thing about parenting in this society. You know, there are certain things in Islam that are absolutely unacceptable. They're taboo, they're forbidden, they're haram, they're, they're evil. But our children see them every day. They see this stuff every day. You can't even avoid it. They're looking out their window and they see a billboard. You know, they're just watching cartoons and an ad comes on. They see this stuff and you put them in, most of you put them in school. And I don't even say Islamic schools are safe because most kids in Islamic school are watching the same shows that the kids in public school are watching. And they're talking about it at the school too. Let's face reality for a moment. They are exposed to a lot of stuff. They really are. So the first time your daughter comes home and starts talking about some, you know, some Disney boy that they're, you know, th that they're pushing on in the media or some girl that sings a lot of songs and these are filthy role models, filthy. They're worse than animals. I'd rather my, my, my children watch like puppet animals than watch these people because they behave worse than animals, wallahi. These, the Hannah Montanas of the world are the filth of the planet. They really are. But when your children bring something like that up, they say something like that. They say something that is completely unacceptable to you. What happens to most parents? This is wrong. You don't talk about these things. Astaghfirullah. Say Astaghfirullah. He's like, oh. Fine, I guess you don't want to talk about it. I'll just talk to my friends about it then. And you know what you just did? You basically told them, if you have something that is of this nature, of a controversial nature, don't talk to me about it. But does that mean they'll not talk about it at all? They will talk to someone and who's it going to be? Their friends. 
Most of the time, they're non-Muslim friends from whom they will get non-Muslim kinds of advice. You close the doors to communication. And me being from the background I am, my ancestry is Afghan. So I have a hot temper. So uh, my daughter came home one day, preschool. My daughter was in preschool. But we have this, we're very possessive of our daughters, you know. So she comes home and she says, you know, Ahmed was so funny in class today. I was like, who's Ahmed? <laughs> and my wife says to me, calm down. Let me talk to her. You go away. You can't handle this. And she talks to him, it was nothing, he just fell off the chair, she was saying it was funny, it's very innocent. But if she hears, my dad get, really gets upset when he hears the name Ahmad or you know, Sharif or who, whatever, you know, so I better not bring it up. I better not tell my parents what happened at school, then I've shut the doors of communication. I've made that mistake. And a lot of parents made that mistake and they're paying price now. And they're listening to this and they're shedding tears because they're remembering the mistakes they made. They really are.